What's up, everyone? Welcome to Around the ACL. Michelle Thompson here with Trey Ryder, and that's it. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody. We have nobody else. Uh, Wally and I ran it alone last week, and uh, now you get Trey and I. um, You know, I guess it's hopefully last week. Last week, I hopefully gave you a little bit more time to prepare than than at the clock. Do we do we reveal five seconds? Yeah. Do we reveal who who did this? Um, we won't reveal it, but his name rhymes with Schmake Schmanen. Yeah, and, that's yeah, good. That'll that'll be the only hint that we give of who just <laughs> hey read forty five seconds to airtime, just <laughs> right right on time well, and, there. And, and and to be clear, he wasn't gonna tell us. We asked where he was. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even like a oh hey, just remembered my bad. I was like, where are you at? Oh yeah, I can't come. Okay, yeah, hey, Jay. <laughs> I mean, schmake, schman, yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah, schmake, schmanin. That, nice job there, buddy. Whoever, <laughs> only, whoever, whoever that mysterious person is. is not so only bad. did he do this to us, but he did it in a show that is one of the most difficult shows. <laughs> because yeah, it's like this span of like two weeks is like the most brutal because you don't have like registrations open for the new <laughs> stuff. Like even, even next week, we're releasing all the videos for the season. We'll talk a little bit about it today, but it's like, at least next week we could talk about all the different formats and what things that we like and things we don't like. Now we're in this like weird in between. We're now like Trey's going to have to start like revealing some information that he probably shouldn't do until Friday when it goes public. Just, just (laughs) brutal. Yeah. So appreciate that. So we are going to talk about some of the pro partnerships that we've seen revealed um, uh, using social media kind of as our uh, backbone there and uh, maybe some partnerships we'd like to see. We'll go into news around the league. That's going to include, um, you know, who our new pros are. And then uh, a short little rookie preview because that was where Jake was supposed to carry it. Good job, Jake. Yeah. And uh, and, and because of that, Trey's going go, uh, to go into some pro season changes, buy or sell. And then I thought it'd be fun to do like superlatives, like back to high school. Uh, maybe some of you start are in high school, <laughs> but like the best step. Did you have that in your high school? Were you part of it? I was not ever a superlative. Unfortunately, I wasn't popular enough. I was like, not, not a, I wasn't a cool kid at school. Misha. I wasn't like you. You were probably, one I wasn't cool. cool. I, the only reason why I got best eyes is because I went to a school that was predominantly not white. And so it was like, Oh, your eyes are green. That's unique. <laughs> so you got know. best eyes though was what was your graduating nice. class though what was your graduating class oh that's a good question um it wasn't a very large high school i remember my middle school graduating class was like 800 plus and i think uh my high school because then i had to go to a different district for my high school uh, i think it was like three four hundred yeah it was like 450 or something like that so yeah hey it wasn't winning huge. best eyes out of that many that's pretty good Well, I'm telling you, (laughs) so so my high school in my district, I grew up in Canoga Park and um, my parents thought that the schools are better. So they sent me somewhere else. And then by high school, they said, yeah, no more of that. You have to go to your high school. Um, And it was uh, definitely a bit of a culture shock for me. Uh, But yeah, it it worked out. I loved my high school, but everybody was broke like me. It was great. The other ones, everybody was rich and I was the only one that wasn't. So it it worked out (laughs) great. (laughs) Yeah, I ended up going to like the high school I went to was like it was like 15 minutes down the road, but everybody that I went to high school with was had money. So it was yeah. like it was it was the running joke that people had but nicer cars than the teachers by far. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay. that's how the high school I was supposed to go to. Everybody at that time, and this is aging me, everyone had either Mustangs or Jettas. That was it. Like you had to have one of those two. <laughs> I had a gold Saturn, uh, old. I mean, they don't even make those anymore. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and I bought it. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, high school was, uh, was fun, but, uh, Oh, high school. <laughs> oh, 400 years ago. ago. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the uh, new, uh, pro partnership. So the ones that I've seen, um, just kind of watching social media, um, obviously we have team hammock as I accidentally called on one of the, uh, <laughs> live streams, uh, Jackson, uh, Remick and, uh, Oh my Gavin god, now what Gavin Hammond? Thank you. I'm now I just think of it as hammock. Um, so they're our college uh, team and they're gonna be playing for BG. Um, we have Eastridge and Ellis, uh, that's gonna be an elite team playing with Ultra. And I know Ellis got offered a pro card, correct, Jaden? Yeah, Jaden Ellis is turning down the pro contract, he wants to keep his college eligibility. So this oh, is oh, interesting. 
He wants to keep his college eligibility. So we do allow that to happen. So um, yeah, uh, even before we go on, like, I think it's worth like talking a little bit about the college side of things. So what's, what's really cool is that I had a bunch of cool college stuff happen literally today before I, I jumped on the call. So one, I had a chance to attend the second Winthrop University cornhole practice. So all 12 athletes were competing in their practice. It's a regimented practice. There's set, we've got sections of technique, uh, game situations, pressure. There are different elements of addressing each one of those different buckets. Um, and they're, they're, they're competing and they are getting ready. And I just also got off on a, a, a call before this kind of arranging the college meets throughout the fall. So there will be college only competition in addition to the open events, in addition yeah. to the national college championship. Uh, 35 schools have been invited to compete across these various meet formats. So we'll see how many show up in year one, but you can see the wheels turning and you can see uh, momentum happening for the, the collegiate side of things as, as more and more schools are starting to come on board and compete. But I'll tell you this much, that Winthrop team has got some players. <laughs> yeah. You think I yesterday um, or sorry, this was Friday. I watched, uh, you know, a head to head matchup and, and during practice, but you know, they're throwing their good on good. It's like Jackson Remick and Gavin Hammond throwing against um, Jacob Harrison and Josh Quinn. And that was without Spencer Fabianar there because he was competing in a different tournament, right? That was without Eddie Wanker competing. He was in a different tournament. So, like, the lineup that, that Winthrop is putting together is really solid. And as more and more colleges build up, they're going to try to follow that model. So the college side of things and as people wanting to keep their eligibility, that's going to help some of these, these really good players uh, keep building the sport at, at that level. I love that that is growing because what a great opportunity for these kids uh, you know, I've talked to some of the high school kids about it, and I've had some that say I never had plans to even go to college. So it's really cool to see that that is something they're considering. Um, we have Zach Engelkin and Brandon Martinez. I just saw that one revealed. They're going to be with BG, uh, JBJ, Logan Chamberlain, Trey Hunt, Justin Duke. I didn't see a bag sponsorship with them. Um, and then I'm, I wasn't sure. I was asking you before, but I saw – Brayden Wilson posted something about being with BG. I saw AJ Sims post something about being with BG. So I'm assuming they're staying together, but I don't think that's necessarily been revealed in any public yeah, way. Yeah, it's like one of those things where it's not been officially announced, but I think everybody's kind of just saying that's what's going to yeah. happen. Like it would be the shock of the century if we didn't if we didn't see them together. Um, but, uh, you know, I, they're obviously, if assuming they're together again, they're going to be, fun to watch. Uh, I mean, Braden Wilson was, I mean, even at the pro invitational was so much fun and uh, even Chugged a Coke. This, okay. For, yeah. Hold on a second. That is so much. I've never done it, but I'm assuming due, due to carbonation, chugging a Coca-Cola would be so much harder than chugging a beer. No, 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 no. He didn't chug it. So backstory Sorry, to turn Tony. <laughs> yes. To turn Tony shows up to the event with his two turn tea, which is his alcohol tea, whatever. So he shows up and he's drinking it himself. Right. And he's like, he pulls random people to shotgun with him. Right. And so people are doing it. Well, he walks up to Braden Wilson, who is infatuated with two turn Tony. And he's not like, well, I'm not going to make this 12 year old shotgun yeah. and alcoholic beverage. Bit, so he's like, what is just <laughs> Why don't you just do it with a Coca-Cola? Okay, shot getting a Coca-Cola sounds miserable. Miserable. <laughs> Absolutely miserable. <laughs> like, no. Abs I would rather yeah. shotgun pretty much anything else, even like a beer I hate, over a Coca. I said, I said to make that fair, two turn Tony should have been chugging champagne. Cause I mean, let's oh, let's go my bubble. Gosh, that's the bubble. only thing I can think of that's worse. Right? I mean, so. Hey, Brayden, I promise it gets better. <laughs> you started off with the worst possible shotgun situation in the history of shotgunning. Yes, the Don't absolute do worst. Don't do the that. Worst. <laughs> All right, are there any uh, teams that you'd like to see either stay together or form new partnerships? 
Yeah, I mean, a couple come to mind, right? I mean, if I look at success from this previous season, I think um, Tony Smith and Mark Richards, this was a weird year for Mark Richards. Yeah. And the one thing, if there's anything that I could caution, I don't see any reason why they would split. But, there, you know, if Tony Smith says, well, Mark didn't have a great year, I want to go find someone else, I think that would be a little bit premature. I really believe that Mark will turn it around. I think he just had a... Had an off off year. I think he's going to get get back to it. Um, whether or not he's the new, you know, he, he gets back to number one. That's a different story. Um, but I, I hope they stay together. I obviously hope the world champs. I don't see Hisner and Birchfield any reason why they should split up. I mean, there's just chemistry, uh, the success. I mean, everything across the board. I'm, I'm hoping they stay together. Um, I think the biggest question marks come in, in you know, form of someone like a Jamie Graham. Jamie Graham, I think, is, you know, he didn't hasn't publicly announced it, but you know, there's been pretty obvious signs, and he's hinted at the fact that him and Frank will go their separate ways. Where does that leave uh, Frank Maudlin, and, and where does Jamie Graham go? I hear rumblings. You know, uh, you're just not sure what's going to exactly happen with Jeremiah Ellis. I mean, for. For a while, we were like, Jeremiah Ellis definitely not splitting from Ryan Hart. And then yeah. it was like, well, yes, he definitely is. And then I was like, no, it wasn't. So I think just some some public clarity on where that ends up will be really in- interesting. I, I, I've heard some rumors, but I don't want to necessarily speculate. Um, and I definitely don't want to, to, to give out bad info or steal any thunder. But, but I do um, know that they're in a two-year, not them as partners, but they're in a two-year with Ultra. So I specifically asked, does that mean you have to stay with your, like, are you in contract with your partner? No, just the bag. So just interesting to look at there. So they do have to stay with Ultra but uh, for another year, but they can swap partners if they want. That'd be interesting as well, because we just saw that Kyle Malone will not be playing with Devin Harbaugh, right? So that's- Okay, I missed that one. All know, right. Yeah, Kyle Malone just put out there, he's looking for a new, he's looking for a new sponsor. He's looking for a new partner. Got it. So, you know, Kyle Malone is is, is going to be a really interesting free agent. And we talk about w- with someone he hand up. I mean, you're talking about someone that's won countless tournaments. I mean, and someone that's always continuously there at the end. I mean, I think that's really um, – that's one that people got to look out for and, and someone that you pair with the right person that could be a really dynamic team. I thought him and Harbaugh were pretty good this season, mm-hmm. um, but but making that split. So who does who does Harbaugh end up with? So I mean, there's a lot of different a lot of different ways that this could this could go. Um, if I look at like the very end and and who made the final four, hoping that Kingsbury and Rawls kind of stay together again. I thought they showed some really good success um, at at the end of the season, certainly. And they were fun to watch. Um, and they're going to be just like JBJ and Logan. They're going to be um, unique in that they're keeping a pro partnership for as long as they have, right? And we see right. so much switching. When you see these partners stick together for years, um, there's very few of those. Right. Um, Rawls and Holland. If I look down the list of rankings from last year, Smith and Richards, we just talked about, Hart and Ellis. I, I mean, I think there's a question mark there. Right. Mm-hmm. I think there's there there could be that switch up. Alex Rawls, Derek Holland. I, they were great. I, I don't know. I thought they were great, right? I mean, especially if you're staying AAR, but you just never know how those teams that they end up splitting up. Then you have Malone and Harbaugh. We know they're splitting up. We just saw that. Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain, they're staying together. Matthew Sorrells and Eric Davis, Fisher Hamilton, Gavin Cano. I think Fisher Hamilton is a really interesting you know, off season question mark Mm -hmm. right now. I think he didn't have his best season. Right. And I think he's fighting through a lot of mental battles right now of what he wants to do and how he wants to handle this coming season. I think if he's at his top level, Gavin Cano wouldn't want to play with anybody else. Gavin Cano, I think him and Fisher think they can be the best team in the world as long as they're focused and they have the right mentality. So I'd be interesting, interested to see if, if it is, it is Hamilton and Cano again this season, just rounding out kind of the top 10. Uh, well, no, Sorrells and Davis, I kind of liked. I, shockingly, um, I thought odd. And then I'm like, it works. <laughs> it totally it, works. Because I think Sorrells lets Davis be Davis. Yep. And I think that's important um, for, for someone in that regard. He's not rounding annoyed with him. He's his biggest yeah. cheerleader. Like he's like, I got the best partner. Like he's not annoyed by his decisions. He's like, yeah, that's why he's the best. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. 
Exactly. Um, Bernasette and Lopez, I loved. I wouldn't yeah. touch it. Yep. Uh, Whedon, Whedonfeld and Smith. Uh, we've seen some stuff on social media about Ryan Whedonfeld not playing yeah. with Ryan Smith. I am not totally convinced that that is accurate. I think it's a joke. Um, I think it's a joke as well. Because that is something that is very BG, right? We saw even yeah. Chamberlain and 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 Burton do it, right? It was yeah. like, oh, I'm not. Who are we playing with, right? And then mm -hmm. they ended up together. So, yeah. I think that that seems unlikely to split. And then Braden Wilson and AJ Sims, we've kind of already talked about. Maybe on the others, what does Ryan Trader do? Um, yeah. We're talking about a player that was arguably one of the most dominant across the entire season. Where playing is with he his end friend? Up? You know, I mean, like that's his friend. It's not like it's just. You know, it's a business relationship. Yeah, that only leaves one other person in the two top tens um, that that we haven't talked about, and that's Jacob Trzinski. I I I've heard some rumblings. I don't know. I mean, I I can't imagine, and I don't understand why a Trzinski and Halbert would necessarily split. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, Temptation, temptation happens. I mean, any of those other free if agents that right. comes up there, <laughs> right, right. It could, it could, it could split it. So um, I thought Trzinski and Halbert were a great team, especially in the second half of the year, and they had nothing to, nothing to be upset about. So uh, we'll see. It's going to continue to be a, a crazy off season. Yeah, hopefully we have some more, and then I think some more of the uh, last chance pro qualifier, qualifiers are going to be. If not, maybe in the next couple weeks, three weeks. Yeah, yeah. There's no. There'll definitely be a bunch coming this weekend. This uh, weekend, okay, cool. So this we'll this weekend we have a bunch. Yeah, we will look for that. Going in the news around the league, I was asking Shrey if he heard anything about anybody retiring. We tend to see those posts. The only one that you've seen is Mike Ferreira. I do remember seeing that post, um, but as of now, I've not seen about um, anything from pro players dipping out. Um, so we'll have to keep our eyes out for that one. Uh, we did have a last chance pro qualifier a couple weeks, two, three weeks ago, a Cooper Bingham got in, um, out of Colorado. Um, so he's going to be in, he's a young player, right? He's got to be college age. Yeah. Yeah. He competed in the high, same high school championship. He won with Gavin Hammond and Jackson Remick. He was from that same right. school district. So, right. okay. um, and that's, what's funny is I think the other one is Dallin Logan and Dallin is also on the Winthrop team. So there's, oh I think those, I think those three guys in particular were really, really excited to see, um, to see Cooper get that, that, that pro card. So that was, that was really cool to see. All right. We have, um, our exemption. And why don't you explain the exemption process a little bit before we get into who's in? Yeah. The only other, actually, I remember two more on the retiring list. It does look like Kimberly glass or Kimberly Broman is going to okay. be stepping away. And Yeti Irwan, two people kind oh. of doing different things in life, um, different stages in life. So, so moving on to do different things. So those were, those were a couple that, that popped up that I saw um that, that also won't be won't be returning now yeah on the exemption list if you looked on there the the acl held essentially a, a number of lists for like um extreme one-off cases um and so that list is final it's jeff reynolds tyrell maxi bella Sopranit, jacob foreman tyler cobb adrian johnson michael nunez peter sesueda chucky love justin stranger mark lopez dave sutton dayton weber kenzie beach and Jay Rubin. Ooh, there's um, so much so, talk. Will he? Won't he? Will he? Won't he? <laughs> so there you go. It's answered. Look, he put in for the exam. He's still going to sign the contract. So I guess there's still, okay. I can't imagine why he wouldn't at this point, but. They've um, been offered pro contracts. Whether or not they accept is, we'll find out. Correct. So, um, you know, a lot of these people on this list, something in their power prevented them from being able to requalify. Ended up, the list was actually ended up being 14 um to account for a couple of these crazy instances that we felt like had to honor so tyrell maxi top 100 the entire year horrible news is his father passed away he couldn't make it to worlds that's just a horrible instance yeah you get someone like abella Sopranit is top 50 all year her pro partner doesn't show up for the world championships she misses out on qualification by one game for a partner yeah. had shown up and won one game with her you know she qualifies so things of that nature Michael Nunez had an emergency appendectomy at Worlds. That's just oh insanity. Goodness. So like, like the worst thing possible. Yeah. So um, so different instances like that. But um, it's good to see some of these names uh, get, a, get a second chance to get back in. It kind of replaces the application process. Um, you know, the ACL wanted to move away from that and move just towards a, a hard qualifying. 
but then that's why you know with some exceptions or some exemptions as we call them people that the um, did everything right the application process in previous seasons it was how many though wasn't it a lot more Oh yeah. One year we took as many as 60 or 70. And yeah. then the last iteration this previous season, I think we took 25 or 30 was the total okay. number. So this is way down from that. Just to, just to take those last few spots. Um, and, and really, um, yeah. And, and as, and we'll, we'll tease this a little bit, but the ACL is publicly, you know, announcing this week, moving, um, towards 2025, 2026, having only 100 pro players. That's a, the goal is to really focus on 100 core players, expand the elite program, the core 100 players, giving them a better opportunity to do this as a professional full time, being able to focus in on them for marketing efforts. Um, and so because of that, right, uh, people, if they don't sign their contracts, they, they won't be backfilled this year. So yep. Um, right now there's at about 240 total players that will be sent contracts and we'll see how many ultimately sign them. I know there's a number that are, we just talked about some that are retiring. I know there's some that played the pro qualifier that won't be taking their contract. So it wouldn't surprise me if 20 to 30, that's, that's about what we had last year that, that turned down a contract that, um, ultimately brings us to, a uh, just above 200, just to get down to 100 the following season. So a lot of a lot of cool things happening in, in some fun ways. Was the 100 number based off of other sports, or what What made you think of that number? Yeah, I think uh, the idea was at 100, we wanted to get close to a base 128 bracket instead of mm -hmm. 100 and instead of 256, kind of uh, reducing that and making it a little bit easier to, to focus on that multiple so that we'd have plenty of spots available to add in elite players who would qualify through um, taking as many as 28 if we wanted full brackets or we're kind of experimenting with the idea of purposely having some buys built in there to reward some top ranked players um, mm. as we go through the season. So um, different things, you know, uh, opening, opening up the the way to, to, to approach the pro division in a, in a new light. Yeah. So that is 2025, not this season, but the following season. So correct. I feel like that needs to be very clear. Um, okay. Rookie preview. Uh, we talked about um, the rookies that got in, uh, in the qualifiers a couple weeks ago, we're going to see more trickling in through the last chance qualifiers. Um, but yeah, Trey, who are you looking at for rookies coming in, assuming they accept their contract and come on board with us? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I look through a lot of this and there's a number of names that jump out to me, but I'll, I'll stick to a couple. Um, you know, the first one that jumps out to me is Gary Bearpaw. I, I mentioned this before Gary Bearpaw is going to be a high PPR player. We're talking about rivaling Matt Guy in wow. terms of PPR and throwing bags in the hole. Matt Guy was like a 10-6 across the entire season. Gary Bearpaw, across all of his events, was a 10-4.5. Wow. So we're talking about someone that is putting a lot of bags in the hole, someone that you're going to have to play a defensive game for. So although the game in some regards um, is is – really playing favorably to more of your hybrid players. I think bear paw is somebody that could come in and, and really be there near the end in a number of different tournaments interested to see how he plays old school. Just, we'll call them old school yeah. players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interested to see how Dia Lee plays Dia mm -hmm. Lee, your women's singles world champion. She came out of nowhere as an amateur. And we're talking about the last amateur to win the women's singles world championship with Sarah Cassidy. I mean, when we look at the career that Sarah Cassidy has, she's a very decorated player. She's someone that is viewed as one of the best women in the entire world and someone that will compete against anybody on any given day. So when I look at the resume for DLE, it, 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 it tells me that she's following in some really, really good footsteps and has an opportunity to be, one of those top ranked women, we, you have talked about her form in the past and the way that she approaches the game and being one that's going to play to her advantage across the year. But I think this is ultimately someone that um, can not only do well in the women's events, but can do well in, in, in all of the pro events. Very focused. Um, Very focused. And I think that plays into it. Brandon Earls is another one and national college singles champion. We we have gone through the many different opportunities in the list of players that have played at the collegiate level that have had success at the pro level. Brandon Earls showed that this past season 
when he won for Delta College, the singles national championship, now has an opportunity to become a pro player. Can he continue that into this part of his career? And then probably the last one, it's not rookie, but I'm th- he's not a rookie, but I'm throwing him in here. What does Jay Rubin have in him, right? Is if he if he comes back, right? Is Jay Rubin still the guy, right? Mm-hmm. One, is he still a guy? Two, who does he play with? Yeah. Right? I mean, you talk about if you're a returning, if you're a top tier player, right? Do you take the risk on Rubin that he's going to be able to put it together? The good news is you have some time to, for him to figure that out, right? Yes, we'll talk about some of the changes and how some of the open the opens are now going to count towards pro points. But the idea is, you know, for Jay Rubin, um, he, he really needs to have some level of success at the opens. But by the time we get to the, the big events in the springtime, you know, he's got to have it together. Maybe that's enough time that you feel confident that he can get back to it. But um, there's – it's time to see whether Jay Rubin still has some, some gas left in the tank. I think he'll have more. I, you know, you hear sometimes, or when you read posts from different players, they might be a little burnt out. Um, I think that can happen with all the travel and, you know, and we forget, we lose touch that we love this, this sport. We love this game. We got into it because we enjoy it so much. And then it becomes so much pressure. And, you know, I got to appease to my sponsors and I got to make enough money to tell my family that it was worth it for me to travel and miss all these things. And so sometimes we lose touch with, I really freaking love this game. And that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, so I think almost taking that year off, not that it was by choice for him, but had to, I think it will just reignite the love. Like he probably missed it and really wants yep. to get back into it with a different kind of hunger than someone who's been grinding potentially. It's a great point. I, I I couldn't agree more. I think it'll be a great opportunity for him. Yeah, definitely. All right. You kind of uh, alluded to some season changes. Why don't you uh, let us in on some things we can look forward to this season? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the, these changes will come public here at the end of this week with some, some cool videos coming out explaining it, but I want to hit on a couple specifically around the pro division that I'm really excited about. Um, the first is that the pro tour will now span the full year and that pro points um, can be earned at these open events. So we hear so many times, well, it's just an open. It's not one of these pro events or, you know, someone wins three opens and it can't count towards their MVP and it doesn't really make sense and blah, blah, blah. Well, now uh, the top tier at these open events will be open to pro and elite players and and they'll earn points towards that. Um you know, in addition to what we formerly called nationals, everybody's familiar with those, the, the terminology is changing over to something called a signature event. And these signatures, uh, there'll be six of them instead of just the four. So uh, across the opens and the signatures a pro players, two best uh, opens and four best signatures are going to count towards their pro ranking in both pro singles and pro doubles. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And, and But then in addition to that, um, you know, there's, there's each of these events is just going to have a core pro singles and pro doubles event. Um, each event will, will either be shootout or classic format, right? So there's no more playing shootout and classic all in the same weekend. You're just going to play singles and you're just going to play doubles. And it's either designated the whole weekend is shootout or the whole weekend is going to be classic. So we're excited for that too. But I think the one that I'm personally mo- most excited about is uh, the new world championship format. So the new world championship format will require all players to qualify for the world championships. So like an actual Super Bowl. I always say that to yes. people who are not in our world. I say worlds is like our Super Bowl. And then I'm like, well, it's kind of not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like a playoff system, right? Yeah. I mean, because everybody, it just becomes another event. Oh, I yeah. just registered for worlds. I'm just playing in the same event. Now for the top tier pros, Instead of all 200 players making the world championships, only the top 40 are going to qualify for singles and the top 24 doubles teams are going to qualify. So um, there will be room for automatic qualifying via standings. So if you finish high enough in the standings, you can get an automatic qualifier. Or we're going to kind of have a last chance play-in tournament. We're going to call them the the challenger bracket, right? We'll take all the pro players who didn't auto-qualify a bunch of top ranked elite players and they're going to throw it down in these challenger brackets 
And if you win your bracket in the challenger bracket, you make, you get into the world championship and that world championship, it's just going to be a throwdown of the top 40 players. And um, I think what it's going to be exciting for is like in advance, we're going to know these brackets. We can even schedule times in which they're going to play, right? Three yeah. o'clock. It's going to be, you know, Jamie Graham versus Cody Henderson on court one, right? That's and so huge. you can go to yeah. him and play and, and watch the entire thing. And we can play our way down all the way through um, until we get that final, until we get that final four that plays on that TV broadcast. So things like that, I think I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, maybe the last thing I'll tease before it comes up this weekend, we will be introducing a women's, seniors, juniors, pro tours. So three different pro tours to highlight those different demographics. So many times we hear, uh, you know, the, the juniors, the restriction on how many can play, blah, blah, blah. I wish they had their own realm to play outside of just junior singles as an open. Well, now there will be a junior pro tour um, that will have guaranteed prize money, that will have guaranteed TV time, that will highlight the best of the best uh, of the U18 demographic. Same thing going for seniors, same thing going for the top women players. And because uh, moving forward, I think in 25, 26, there will no longer be a minimum requirement for, okay, we have to have 24 women. We have to have X amount of juniors. We have to have X amount of seniors, whatever. It's just going to be the hundred best players. And so if a woman is good enough to compete both on the women's tour and the regular pro tour, then she can do that. And um, you know, th th I think that that makes it really cool um, and really special for our sport. So um, again, more, more, much more detailed information coming out um, with all of the videos. Uh, we'll have explainer videos, literally diving into all of the different elements to these different changes. We'll have the guides that are going to be published, both the pro guide and the player guide that'll go out, that'll have all the detailed information. But it's kind of a nice little preview for those that are, that are really interested to see how the pro division shakes out. Yeah, I love that. I think it's such a great, happy medium of keeping the pro field what it is, but also offering something for those other divisions because um, it's needed. So I love that we're kind of solving that problem. All right, it's time for buy or sell. I guess it's just you. I don't know. I mean, I wrote them, but we can, <laughs> I guess I could do it with you. Um, yeah. The first one is um, about, you know, we got the draft coming up at the beginning of October. So team captains will alter their strategy going into the draft based on last season's outcome, meaning the the team that won, we didn't think would win. So what yeah. now you're starting to look at what's the recipe for success. So do you think that you, they're going to change their strategy? Yeah, I think so. I'll buy it. And, and, you know, the full details for how the ACL teams format um, will be coming out in the next couple of weeks as well. And I'm really excited for that. Let's just say, it won't be the same thing over and over and over again anymore. There's going to be some level okay. of variation. So there's some fun stuff to be had there. Um, so, but yeah, I think they're going to learn something. And But look, if I'm looking at that final, the thing that I saw most important is the team that had the best chemistry, chemistry. even if it was disjointed, <laughs> they, they figured out how to, how to make it happen. Energy is going to win in the playoffs. Yes, you have to have a good solid team to get you there. But I think that's what hurt the Aviators. On paper, the Aviators were the best team, but they were very like stone-faced, focused, and they didn't have the energy to build the momentum when the lights were brightest to deliver. And I think that's why you had the coasters and the slingers in the final. So buy it. I think you have to lean into the chemistry in order to draft a good team. So I'm going to sell because I agree with everything you said, but I still don't think they will. <laughs> I, still, <laughs> I still think they're going to be like, oh, no, this is the best player. We got to get him, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I just don't, I don't see it actually happening, but I think it should. Um, all right. Uh, next one. Bag sponsorships will play the biggest role in pro partnerships. So I'm saying biggest and not necessarily chemistry, not necessarily if we're friends, um, just the bag sponsorships. Uh, I'll buy for this season, right? Okay. Um, but I still think our sport is so new that people don't understand this. It is going to change so much every single year until we finally get some level of, of pla you know, not plateauing, but we get some level of consistency in how these are approached, right? Because I think what happened three years ago, three years ago, uh, this new bag policy or whatever comes out and everything is dated and stamped and everything like that. And so everybody 
the whole market is flooded with people having to buy brand new cornhole bags. We see this huge spike in these bag companies getting huge, paying out huge contracts to these pro players that I believe was ahead of its time. Nothing wrong with it. It was just jump the gun. And so when that originally came out, all the players had all the leverage because they were just saying, write me a check and then you will take who I give you. Mm -hmm. The issue that happened was because all of this money got so big so quick that when the market corrected itself over the next couple of years, because cornhole sales and cornhole everything are still showing consistent growth. The issue is we shot so high over these player sponsorships in year one that you have to come back down in order to correct yourself to then follow the path to go back up, right? And so what we saw over the past two seasons was players go and companies going, well, I'm not going to spend as much on sponsorships or I'm going to be much more selective on who I sign. And so because of that, players were trying to keep the same amount of money that they had made over the past few seasons and trying to hone in. What yep. we will see is, I think, over the next two seasons, is we saw these bad companies come down a little bit as far as what they were spending on sponsorships. There's going to be a group of 15 to 30 players that figure out how to market themselves better with some help and also know how to lean onto social media, also know how to be a true brand ambassador of brands. And we're going to see that money start going back up to a select group of players. And the players, if they realize that they had that leverage, they can help dictate those partnerships, but they have to prove it first. Sure, It can't be something that they just show up to a board. I throw four baggers, give me a lot of money. Yep. It's going to be people. I, I still say, I say this to all the pro players all the time. The first person that knows how to truly master social media and combine it with skill will be a seven figure earner on a yearly basis through cornhole over yep. the next five years. I promise you the first buy, person I to buy, figure I it buy, out. I buy, I buy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's a long way to, what, what, what was even the question? Buy, I, buy, I guess, but like, yeah, that's you, my little you bought, today. you're good. Uh, it actually kind of plays into the next one, which is we're going to see an increase in super teams like Richards and Smith. I, I think so. I mean, I think there will be a top concentration of talent in the short term from these bag manufacturers trying to sponsor teams that they think can really, really win and deliver. So I, I will buy that as well. All right. And now the next ones are funny. Corey will change something else in the live stream setup this season. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, we just, I just got the schedule proposed for the entire year. So at least the la- that's consistency there. I think it would have been better if it was like um, over, uh, we should have done over under 12 cameras for Chase Hunter on the live stream <laughs> setup this year. You're throwing Chase under the bus. I'm throwing Corey under the bus. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a great, they're a great tag team, but they're, they're doing some, they're doing some fun stuff. Hey, a shout out to them though. What they did in Ventura for the Spencer McKenzie's throwdown and for the Pro Invitational, you know, shout out to those guys. They put on a great production because to me, it, it didn't feel like it changed much from the previous years. And what we were able to do with our live stream team versus the, the huge TV production truck and crew that was there, yeah. I, I couldn't be more proud of what Jason Corey did. So we give him a little hate, but I got to give him some props at the same time. Oh, we love it. It's fun. It's just funny also <laughs> at the same time. All right. Wally Castle will be dead last in the ACL fantasy football pool. I'm excited for this. Okay, I can't hand on Wally too much because there's so many players that are going to finish way worse. So I have to sell it, (laughs) but not because I think he's going to finish like first, second, or third or anything like that. But 20 people in the ACL League, for those that don't know, we're going to be talking smack on this on social media. Misha's in it. I'm in it. A number of Jake's in it. Wally's in it. I mean, there's a ton of people that are in it. 20, we got two different 10 league teams that'll have their own separate drafts. And then they'll play through the playoffs, and then the ultimate champions will meet meet in week uh, seventeen for an overall championship. So this is like this is a big deal. We got people that have no idea what they're doing. We have people well, that that sometimes do know what they're doing. <laughs> However, I know I don't know if you've noticed, but do you know? Have you looked at the matchups for the week by week? No, I haven't. Week week number one, Trey versus Mish. Oh, Throwing it down in week one. So. Oh my god, we have a, a cornhole league uh, or a fantasy football league. We drafted last night, um, and I got the first pick, which was cool. I I don't know. I should have put that on here. Like, do you like? I don't like first pick because it's first and then it's eighteen. 
I mean, it's oh, so give me long. first pick. I'd rather have I'd rather have one than like honestly anything one through six. I'm happy with. If I end up with like seven through ten, then I just want to beat my head against the wall. Yeah, I don't know. I just the the first is rough. You need then, you need someone that, that that gets a ton of points every single week. You just need that one player, yeah. and if you don't get them, you're going to be in trouble. It's Who'd true. you go with? No, it's true. Yeah. What was that? Who'd you pick? CMC. I mean, hopefully he doesn't get injured. And I was trying to pick up his backup in the you know final rounds. Someone got it because I have to wait. So it's like, do I take him way too early so I have his backup, you know, or do I wait and try to get him in round, you know, eleven and then he was gone. So, anyways, yeah. Um, but yeah. So first week I I play uh, Danny Borja, owner of TWT. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. All right, let's get to our superlatives. We were kind of talking about it earlier. I put it over on a. We have like a group. Uh, chat thing for the ACL and so I put it on there like what do you guys think who who deserves what I gave some ideas of what could be on there and it was interesting to see people's feedback some that stuck out to me um you know best dress a couple votes for AJ Sims I don't I don't feel like I've seen him in anything other than uh cornhole gear I, so I'm like what AJ what am I missing not that he's badly dressed I've just never seen this AJ style. Sims got that drip yeah I guess wow. so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping on it uh best hair Tony Forbes or Sarah Cassidy. We got both there. Uh, oh, Sarah's best. hair is impeccable, actually. It's almost kind of frustrating how, like, it's like to her, her hair. Like her waist. Yeah. It's crazy long. Uh, best roll shot, Ethan Walker. Best airmail, we got Tanner Halbert, Devin Harbaugh. Um, let's see. Best personality. There's quite a few on this one. We got Moses, Rosie, Deborah Odom, Braden Wilson. Uh, a couple votes for Deb, actually, there. I liked this one most likely to play professional cornhole their entire life. Hands down, everybody put Jamie Graham. <laughs> Jamie Graham, yeah. I think you're going to play cornhole the rest of your life. Um, let's see other fun ones we have here. Um, most likely to pass Cheyenne as top female, Kaylee Hunter or Dia Lee. You talked about Dia earlier. Most likely to get the first seven-figure sponsorship, Dre, Trey Birchfield. Uh, we added a biggest arms in cornhole, Jimmy Humans. Uh, congratulations, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> most likely to become a cornhole coach, Mark Richards. <laughs> that is actually facts, though. I could see, like, literally <laughs> getting down to the nitty gritty. I mean, he's just like a basketball coach, fundamentals mm -hmm. type of guy. Like, totally. he just he just makes it happen. Makes All right, what do you got? All right. Um, I went a little bit more like off the wall, like not Love standard. It. So okay. we'll see. We'll see if you like these. Um, some of these are, are more basic. So, but uh, most fun to watch this mm. season. Someone that I I thoroughly enjoyed throughout the entire year. That I think did a fantastic job of like literally captivating people. Braden Wilson. Yeah, uh, I thought Braden Wilson was just um, a positive energy and an intense energy all season long. And I found myself always just excited to watch him. And you know, even when you see it on social media, one, he's upping his social media game. If you're not following Braden Wilson on social media, you probably should. His TikTok is is, is pretty, pretty good. So Okay, I was um, going to ask about that because I feel conflicted, like having being a mother. I don't want my child on social media at his age because I think social media can be really toxic and bad. So it's like yeah. how conflicting for his parents to have to balance like, but this is for literally his career. That would be hard. Yep. That's a tough spot. It is. It is. But and I think he's doing a fantastic job of how he's going about it. Right. And, and, or it could not be him on all for all we know, it's Nicole just posting everything and actually <laughs> yeah. interacting with everybody. That's probably what but, I would end up doing. I'd be like, you can record the content, but I don't want you ever logging on. Like I honestly, I yeah, feel like no reading the comments. we have to like shield our children from the horrors of social media, the horrific it's, it, people that live on there. <laughs> it's, it, you make a good point. You make a good point. Um, all right. Most likely to make my jaw drop at any given moment, Eric Davis. Absolutely. Because there were so many times I remember being working the scoreboard in Ventura for Spencer McKenzie's. And there were multiple times where I just went like <laughs> literally because I just, it, it wasn't possible what I thought was going to happen. That airmail drag to stay in it is just outrageous. And he continuously just like invents new ways for the bag to let. It's just. Oh, that reminds me. I skipped outrageous. a couple from Michael that I think are important. I got two more for you. Oh, yeah. I want to. Most likely to call a timeout, Jamie Graham. 
Oh, most, I was going to say Frank Maudlin, but both work. Both work. Okay, and then most page to a court. <laughs> Chucky oh, Love. Be Chucky, yeah, yes, Chucky Love. Most <laughs> page to a court. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? I walk outside. He's out there listening to his music. He's chilling. He's not even in the building. <laughs> I love it. I had, love a, I had a... I had a biggest pain in my ass, but I guess I shouldn't say that one out loud. So I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to cross oh, you gotta that tell out, me so. off air then. I, I'm, yeah, I'm biggest curious. pain in my ass. I'm I'm scratching that one out right now. We won't say that on there. Uh, most <laughs> Alicia, matured. Alicia matured. said we had to be positive, Trey. Yes, exactly. No more biggest pain in my ass. Okay. Um, <laughs> most matured, I'll give to Ethan Walker. Oh, he yeah, was, I like that. Um, he was an annoying little kid at the beginning of the season, and now he's a grown-up, not as annoying person. So shout out Ethan Walker gets <laughs> he grew, that. He um, grew up. Good job. Um, best at handling being yelled at. Oh. Um, this is going to Jack Geddes, uh, our videographer on, on the ACL <laughs> staff, because I literally screamed at him in West Wago as we were trying to put together furniture for the backyard um, and I, I just yelled at him. And so, um, I said some things that I literally can't repeat on here. So shout out Jack for being able to handle being yelled at by me. So, yeah. Congrats. um, and then I guess I'll wrap things up with most likely not to get, uh, a contract for this coming season. Uh, we'll go with Schmake Schmanen for yes. not showing up to the, uh, around the ACL today. So that's going to be you know most what? likely not to get a contract next year. I was going to add in buy or sell, but I forgot most likely to get fired by the ACL and, and, <laughs> and throw Schmake Schmannon on there. Um, so I'm glad that you covered that. Oh, you, you know what I think hurt. this, you know what, maybe the way you should do, maybe we force, because Jake is in the fantasy league, we make it so he has to be the 12th pick now. Or should we just <laughs> yes, forfeit that, his that first round? perfect punishment. He's got to be the 12th pick. I think that's, that's I think that's what we have to do. Right. I mean, I think there's no other way to do it because he's oh, man. and his Ravens are playing that night. So, I th oh, you know what? He is not allowed to watch the Ravens game. Maybe we make him sit How? in a room. How? We know. can't dictate that. You can dictate the draft order. That's that's uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess very true. Very true. I guess we're going to we'll find out if he listened to this in about what, 24 hours. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right well we're, we're over to uh uh where are we hot takes what are we doing yeah, we're hot takes. <laughs> what do you got all right uh my hot take um i'm kind By of the way, mine's the not super hot so i'm curious what yours is yeah i don't know i'm doing a double so maybe okay. if i parlay it it's spicy um okay dia lee top three woman in the sport this coming season Ooh, okay and then jay rubin Oh, no. is a top 15 player again this season. He gets all the way back to the top 15. Okay, so mine's spicier then because mine was Jay Rubin will be a top 10 player. Oh, that is spicy. Okay. That Going all spicy, the way to yeah. top. D did we even know if he, like, I'm doing the worst thing ever and I'm going to try to, like, look up something in real time, but I'm not okay. even sure that he, um, was he a top 10 player when he left? Well, I didn't necessarily I say so. singles or doubles. I just said top 10. So it could be singles or doubles. Wow, we are spicy already. He was 27 his last what season. What about doubles, though? It was – had to be up okay. there because they won. Uh, well, last season he was 25. Like the season before before when, yeah. when Eddie and Caleb won. Yeah, yeah. Now okay. the year that they – him and Jordan won doubles, they were three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, all right. I think that he's going to have his pick at a great partner, and I see him taking top 10 either in singles or doubles. Um, so I'm glad. I'm glad to think it's spicy. All right, Trey, we did it. No, Nobody thought we could, but we did. We did it way better. Like that was easy, actually. We just we just ratted on on Jake and Wally and everybody the whole time. It's easy. We can do that. That makes show it like so that. easy. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time.